he is so good to us, and uh, I have uh, just, well, I don't have permission to share. I probably could share, but I, I'll just give you a general testimony. A family was just waiting on some uh, owed income that wasn't coming, got to a pretty tight place, uh, and, and anyway, decided we're just going to give our give some tithe and uh, and and trust, and, and like within a day or two, that uh, the funds that were had been waiting on for a long period of time showed up, and uh, you know just things like that happen all the time. God is just faithful, you know. And uh, a lot of times, um, I know when I was a younger pastor, I was always a little squeamish talking about giving because you know people don't want to hear about giving. But I figured out uh, it's I'm talking about blessing. <laughs> right? If you want to live in the favor of God, the outstanding provision of God, the financial protection of God, there is a, a fairly direct way to get uh, underneath the open heavens, and that is trust Him with the tithe. And so I uh, appreciate you being faithful in that. Uh, in addition to giving, just wanted to remind you, our, all of our programming is, is up and running, so uh, we have home groups that meet, we have Bible study on Wednesday, we just finished uh, a, about a 30-week long study of Revelation, uh, so if you want to know anything about end times prophecy, uh, talk to one of our students, don't talk to me, no, I'm just kidding, uh, 30 weeks of study was a lot, uh, boy, I just was blessed, you know the Bible says you are blessed when you read the book of Revelation, and uh, I, we really found that to be a blessing to go through that. We are starting in just a four-week teaching on uh, spiritual warfare in the Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m., love to have you be a part of that, we're going to practice what we preach and, and uh, end those times with some prayer. Uh, but check out our Bible studies and our home groups. You can stop by our Welcome Center. And once again, make sure you do wonderful, extraordinary, kind, and loving things for your mom today, your wife today. Uh, pamper them, bless them, take really good care of them. Uh, they do a lot for you. Amen. So uh, why did the baby strawberry cry? Why? His mother was in a jam. So, yeah, dad jokes. Speaking of being in a jam, I, one mom wrote down some of the lessons uh, she had learned. How many moms would say, you've learned some things by raising kids? Uh, for example, she learned that the water uh, from a king-size waterbed, when uh, accidentally punctured, can add four inches of water to the entire surface of a 2,000-square-foot house. Yeah, she learned that a three-year-old boy crying and screaming can be louder than 200 adults in a, in a crowded restaurant. Anybody experience that? Uh, she learned that when you hear the toilet flush followed by the words, uh-oh, it's already too late. Yeah, we, uh, th this isn't pleasant, but we had to pump a septic tank one time, and, uh, and it was amazing what kind of toys and all kinds of things besides what's supposed to be in the septic tank were in the septic tank. And there's only one way they got there is somebody flushed them down the toilet, Barbie heads and toys. There's things that I never would have thought would have fit through the plumbing. It's just unbelievable. Um, learned that a six-year-old boy really can start a fire with a flint rock, even if his dad said they only do it on TV. Yeah. Uh, you, she learned that uh, certain Legos will actually pass through the, the digestive tract of a four-year-old. Quarters do too, and marbles. And, uh, Play-Doh and microwaves should not be used in the same sentence. Don't try this at home. Super glue really is forever. No matter how much jello you put in a swimming pool, you still can't walk on water. And pool filters don't like jello. Uh, garbage bags make poor parachutes. The spin cycle on the washing machine does, does not make earthworms dizzy. But it does actually make cats dizzy. Except the cats throw up when they're dizzy. We learned that at my house. <laughs> I bet you could share some stories you've had. Um, today I want to uh, talk about God's solution for stress. God's solution for stress. I think it was um, Bilbo Baggins, that ring a bell, Lord of the Rings, uh, who, who said something that I think applies to many of us in 2021. He said, I feel thin, sort of stretched, like butter scraped over too much bread. 
Does anybody feel a little spread too thin, a little wore out, a little overdone, a little weary? Um, it's been a season. I don't think life has ever been necessarily easy. And I don't know if this is the hardest time of all history because I haven't lived in all history. But it's been a, a season, hasn't it? And I think it is a common, uh, when I talk to people, how you doing? I, I've heard this answer for a long time, but it seems to be uh, almost universal now when people, the answer to how you're doing is tired. Uh, and I think it doesn't necessarily have to do with sleep or work. It has to do with the emotional stress, with change. You know, one of the, the uh, effects, if you will, one of the ways that stress and worry and anxiety and even discouragement, despair, uncertainty, all those kind of emotions manifest is in physical fatigue and weariness and uh, seems to be very commonplace. Uh, Overloaded. You ever just felt overloaded? Just a little more than you can handle. When I was in high school, uh, I think it was probably between a junior and senior year. I was 16 or 17 years old. Uh, my, a couple of my friends and I decided uh, that we just got this fun idea. We're going to make a mobile hot tub. <laughs> my friend had a, uh, a 19, I think a 1976 Ford F-150. Some of you remember those new off the lots, right? But this was in about 1988. Uh, it was uh, long been uh, worn out, but still drove. And we decided we're going to, it had an eight foot full bed long before they made these little short cab things. And so we're like, we're going to make an eight-foot-long hot tub. We're going to cruise the main streets of Manchester. Come on. And so we did. We we lined that bed with plastic, and and amazingly, it it held water really good. I I will say it wasn't a hot tub. It was a cold tub. That part failed, but it actually held water, and we did cruise. There's only one, like, one main street in Manchester, so you just go up and down, you know, kind of loops. But we did it for hours. Because how cool is that to have a mobile swimming pool? Uh, and so it held water. Where you know it, now here's something, you know I be, later became an engineer. I learned a lot about mathematics and science. At this point in time, I don't think any of us were thinking mathematics and science. We were thinking fun, right? So something that we didn't think about is, is that a, a the, the eight foot bed of a of a full size pickup truck is about 66 cubic feet. You all wanted to know that. It's important because how many gallons of water can you fit in 66 cubic feet? 500. 500. Uh, now that sounds fun. Not a big deal. It did take a lot. That would explain why it took so long to fill with the garden hose, right? But the additional mathematics of this is not only is it 500 gallons, but how much does a gallon of water weigh? 8.33 pounds. And so you multiply that times 500, you're well over 4,000 pounds. Now, a, contrary to popular belief, a half-ton pickup can haul more than a half-ton. Um, I looked at the, uh, the 2021 statistics, specifications. They rate a Ford F-150 somewhere a little over 2,000 pounds payload, 2,200. So, so that's pretty good. That's a whole ton for a half ton. You're getting a good deal. But what happens when you put 4,000 pounds plus three or four teenage boys in a worn out already half ton truck? So you're, you're pushing probably 4,500 pounds plus. So it, you know, it settled down on the, uh, the shocks compressed, the springs compressed, and it just settles nicely on the frame. We were low riding before low riders were the thing. <laughs> but hey, we're mobile swim pool. This was cool, and we cruised, and it was all good. And matter of fact, it was so much fun, I think we did it all day long. So here's where it became a problem. That part was really cool. I recommend it, except, except when we drained the water out. I mean, isn't it amazing that it held? We, we, we did a good job. When we drained the water out, the truck that was low riding on the frame was still low riding on the frame because shocks and springs that had compressed by 4,500 pounds all day long cruising Main Street now no longer held much spring at all. (laughs) And um, 
We learned a little lesson that day. That when you carry more than you were designed to carry for longer than you were designed to carry it, you're eventually going to do some damage. And I wonder how many of us today are doing some damage in our life because we're carrying more than we were ever designed to carry. And we've been carrying it longer than we were ever designed to carry it. And you can get away for, for a while, and it might even seem exhilarating, but i got to tell you, you're doing some damage. You see, we don't have, you know, we think that things fall apart in an instant. All of a sudden, health fell apart. All of a sudden, a marriage fell apart. All of a sudden, something exploded with the kids. No, it's been breaking for a long time because I've been carrying more than I was built to carry, and all of a sudden, it happens. And honestly, a, a physical load is, is part of life, and, the, and uh, I still thank the Lord I'm healthy, but I, 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 I have become aware I'm not 16 anymore. I have a comment, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> wouldn't be appropriate. But I don't know if you figured out, I, I, I do farm work and other things, so I know what physical fatigue is all about, um, but there is something far more, uh, far heavier than physical fatigue, and that is when we're carrying stress, strain, worry, anxiety, struggle, pressure, uncertainty. Uh, difficulty when we're carrying a load of financial debt, we're carrying a, a, a physical struggle and we don't have a solution for it, when there's something going on with one of our kids and we can't fix it, those things seem to weigh heavier on us than, than the physical. And I have some great news for you today. God gives us an answer. Jesus addressed this directly. And to be honest, it's, it's, it's nothing real new. As a matter of fact, I'm quite sure I've preached this text before. But I want to give just a, some different, a few different thoughts and a little different spin today on Jesus' solution. We're in the middle of a series uh, called To Be Continued, that faith is to be continued and built upon rooted, grounded, going deeper with God, but especially what we've been learning is about daily practices. Things that we typically do in a, in a crisis, like pray when things get bad, we're learning we should probably do that every day and begin to build up our relationship and build up reserves. We talked about speaking in faith, faith declarations, doing that not, uh, not just when I'm in a battle and need to build my faith, but what if I do that ahead of time, that I'm living out of abundance instead of living always out of, be of being behind, right? I, um, I mowed my grass yesterday for the first time of the year. <laughs> now, some of you are, are living in abundance had your mower ready, had the blades sharp, and, and you've been cutting grass for three or four weeks already. And life is good. But when you let things accumulate, <laughs> my normal three-hour job, of, which is a big job of mowing grass, took me seven yesterday because I, you know, picking up sticks and clearing the yard, mowing the yard, dealing with... I, I, I did, I, 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 not even making this up, I bail hay. We have a hay field in the front. I was like, Melissa, can I just bail it? Like, just give me like three, four more weeks, let it go. And she, can you believe she said no? She, <laughs> she wanted her grass mowed. And so it's Mother's Day weekend. I mowed the grass. But, but when I was living out of deficit, in other words, literally, I, I wish I could tell you I was more uh, better planning than this, but I, I think at the moment, I think in my barn is five lawnmowers. None of them worked come spring. None. Zero. And so, uh, so living out of that place of deficit meant I had to fix lawnmowers. The grass got... Everything was harder. You get it? Everything was harder. Whereas it's the living out of abundance is I've been praying. I've been reading the Word. I've been speaking faith. I've been, I've, we learned last week about listening to the voice of God. When we're living out of abundance and preparation, we are ready 
for what happens. And we can take it in stride instead of all these things accumulating in our life to all of a sudden it's a major crisis. And I hope I can, for some of you, you're just ultra-disciplined people by nature. Praise God for you. Uh, But for many people, this is a struggle to do things daily when I don't feel that pressing need. But I got to tell you, it pays great dividends when we begin to live out of the abundance of faith, the abundance of time with God. I've been hearing God, walking with God, speaking with God. And today's lesson fits this category of something we tend to do in crisis, but I'm going to hopefully inspire you to do daily. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Jesus said, come to me, all of you moms who have kids. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. You notice that he says when, in, the, in Scripture, when things are repeated, um, that is, is a writing technique of the first century of emphasis. So God is saying, come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and you will find rest. He says it twice. Rest, and here's the deal, rest for your soul. What is that? It's one of those Bible words, right? I think we bounce around words like soul, spirit, uh, and all these things, but we don't quite know what they mean. And so the Bible says we are made in the image of God. How many believe that? Made, and, and the Bible says that God is spirit. In the book of John, and true worshipers worship Him in spirit and in truth. So if we're made in the image of God, you and I are in our essence, we are spiritual beings. We have a spirit and our spirit is eternal, right? We receive the Holy Spirit. Our spirit uh, is what's born again, what's made brand new. And, uh, and redeemed our spirit uh, to be absent from the body. We are present with the Lord. So we are a spirit, but our, we live in a body. This is our temporary house, right? We are spirit that lives in a body, and we have a mind. We have a mind, right? And that is what is commonly in the Bible called your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your thoughts, your personality, your identity. So you your, your spirit is eternal, immortal, either up or down, but it's eternal, right? <laughs> your body is temporary, uh, but you have a mind, you have a will, you have thoughts and personality and uniqueness. And Jesus said, what did he say? You will find rest. I don't think your spirit needs rest. I, I can't comprehend that it would, right? Uh, but Jesus is not addressing your body. I, I honestly think that's your responsibility, to steward your health. Because God gave us insights for that. He, God created day and night. Do you believe that? Sun, moon, and stars, that was God. The, the revolution of the earth, our orbit around the sun, the moon, the solar cycles, lunar cycles. God made day and night. God made weeks, months, and years. That was His idea. And so the idea was what? Work in the day, sleep at night. And one day in seven, have a Sabbath to take care of yourself, right? To worship God and rest. So if we neglect good health and we neglect rest and now we have electricity so we can work all day and work all night and then we can turn on electronics and stay up doing foolish things that waste brain power and feed nothing into our soul and we wake up tired and wondering what did I do except we do it again the next day, right? And so... Physical rest, I would submit, is our our responsibility to steward these bodies. Our spirit doesn't need rest. So Jesus said, here is where it matters. I will bring rest to your soul. Which I think we've kind of figured out that's the big problem, right? These physical bodies will tend to recover with a little rest, but the burden that really weighs me down are the emotional ones. And that's where Jesus said, hey, I've got an answer for that. The Amplified Bible says this, same verse, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve 
and refresh your soul. How many say, that sounds good to me? Oh, it gets better. Hang on. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest, listen to this, relief, ease, refreshment, recreation, and blessed quiet for your soul. Where is that found? In Christ, taking up His yoke, whatever that means. We're going to have to get to that. For my yoke is wholesome, useful and good, and not harsh or sharp or pressing. My yoke is comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. My burden is light and easy to be born. So who's he talking to? <laughs> All who are weary. Now that may or may not describe you, but if you would say, like most people I talk to, how you doing? Oh, man, just tired. This is you, right? Because I think there's more than physical fatigue going on. All who are weary and heavy laden. That's an interesting word, heavy laden. It really implies this. How many of you like to make only... I do, right? And so you got 19 bags in each hand. Like I have a family, right? And you got the bread that you got to stick out here on a finger, and you got some, some eggs under your pinky, and you got heavy stuff in the middle <laughs> times two, and, and you're trying to open the door with your foot. Come on. And it's burning, and it's numb, and it hurts, but I'm not about to make two trips. That is a, a type of fatigue, but it passes pretty quickly, right? And, and maybe like, like I had yesterday, about seven hours of yard work, I was tired come bedtime. It's good for you. You sleep good that way. Um, I feel good today, right? It was, it was a long day. It was good hard work, but it was not overwhelming to recover from. Heavy laden means you've been, like, like our little swimming excursion, you've been carrying too much for too long. You've been carrying too much for too long. A, a, a friendly spat with your wife is, is actually pretty healthy, right? It promotes, then you've got to make up and, and do other things that involve making up, right? And so a little healthy spat is recreational for the marriage. It's good. Um, but, but, when it go, but, but a week-long or two-week-long or month-long spat, that, that gets wearisome. That's not healthy. That's not, right? A, 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 a struggle with a teenager is part of parenting a teenager. But, but a rebellion that lasts weeks or months wears you out. A, a, a cold that lasts a weekend is no fun. But you move on. But a sickness or, or pain that lingers or a, a disability that doesn't go away for weeks or months, you start to get a, a new level of tired. Weary and heavy laden is talking about, I'm, it's not just kind of I, I worked hard and now I'm, I'm duly tired. It means I've been carrying too much for too long. And especially emotionally. Right? Debt will wear you out. Right? Carrying the, the, the worry of how to pay the bills. Uh, a wayward child, even if in a, they're an adult child, right? That a strained relationship will wear you out because you're constantly thinking about it. When you go to work every day and there's strain and strife or you're concerned of the stability of your company, that will wear you out. Pain that, that you can't seem to find permanent relief from will wear you out. And that is the type of thing that he's talking about. You who, are, who have been carrying too much for too long, he says, I've got an answer for you. I've got an answer for you. And it's pretty direct. And he says this promise. He says, I will give you rest. I will. You will find rest for your soul. For your soul. Rest in this context, now, this is what I wish it meant. You ever wish you could just tweak the Bible a little bit? Oh, come on. Liars. Just a little tweak here and there would help my cause. I wish it meant, come to me all who are weary and I will make it all go away. Come on, Lord. That's not what it means. How many have ever come to the Lord when you are weary and it was there when you were done? 
Because this is what it means. It means to pause. Pause. To take a, a rest. To take a rest. If you've been on a hike or a run or something, just, just to sit or stretch or get a drink of water, it kind of refreshes you enough that you can you take off and go again. You who are weary and heavy laden. It, it, you know, when you're watching... Uh, now, I, I can't stand television. Not, uh, the content's not very good anyway, but it's the commercials. I just hate them. So we tend to watch something that's recorded or Netflix or something. Plus, when you're watching something pre-recorded, you have this wonderful little tool called Pause. Right? When you need snacks, right? When you're watching something, you need snacks. You can push pause. Or when you have had too many snacks and you need to go to the bathroom, you can push pause. And what does that mean? I intend to come back to this, but I can, can give it a break for a minute. And Jesus says, when you come to me, I will give you a pause for your soul. And that may not sound like much, but in my, most of the time, that's exactly what we need. You can handle what you're going through with God's help, but you're overwhelmed. And you need a rest. And God says, I'll carry that for a minute. I'll give you a break. I'll lighten your load. Now, sometimes He might just help us along the way and say, that's just dumb. Quit thinking about it. And, and, and sometimes what we're carrying is, is just this load of unforgiveness. And He's saying, you, you, were, you weren't built for that. You just need to forgive Right, that's a load you were never designed for. Bitterness, and you're right, just don't let that bitter root. You're just that bitterness is just where you just got to get rid of it. And sometimes it's uh, you know a family thing, and he's like, you're not quitting on your family, but I'll give you some rest for your soul so you can go back at it and bring healing and recovery and reconciliation, some perspective. Right, rest for your soul means a pause, a break, a, a relief, so that you're rejuvenated. And so that you're ready to carry that load again. Rest for your soul. What a promise. And, and he makes it fairly direct. He says two things. One, come to me. Come to me. Doesn't that sound simple? And how many have a really good habit of at least by the ninth or tenth thing you try, you go to the Lord with it? After I've tried to fix it, after I've struggled, after I've had sleepless nights, after I've strained, after I've checked YouTube, after I've Googled, after I've read some books, after I've talked to my friends, and after I've cried about it on social media, oh yeah, I should probably pray about this. All right, come to me is the idea of prayer, but it's really the idea of presence, right? Come to me, get, come near me, get in my presence, come to me when you're weary, because I can give you rest. I can take care of this. I can give you a pause for your soul. I can give you refreshing for your soul. I can lighten that load. And I would suggest, um, all of us, myself included, what if we could get that embedded in our spirit? Let's do that first. Let's do that first. When I'm feeling weary, the first thing I need to do, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and What's the promise? All these other things, I'll take care of that. The second one, he said, was take up my yoke. Has nothing to do with an egg. Yoke is a, uh, an old, older farming implement for use with oxen. Right? Long before there was John Deere, there was a yoke and oxen, right? You got they used to get you know bring their buddies over to check out their new ox. Hey, I got a, before there was green and red and blue. All right, there was brown ox and black ox and a spotted ox and yeah, that's a big ox and and that that was their implement to do farm work. And and most of the time they would hook at least two of them together so they would have a wood beam it, you've seen them probably as an antique store or something they're arched on each side to go over the the neck and shoulders of that oxen they would often have a harness that would come under the underside and it would it would tie these two oxen together and provide a a framework to hook both of them to some kind of load doesn't mean much to you and I. In Jesus' context, everybody knew what a, a yoke was. It meant the, the, the load you were carrying and who you were tied to. Right? You've heard of don't be unequally yoked. That means don't get connected, don't get tied together 
with, uh, with an unbeliever, with somebody of different mindset and worldview. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. You will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. I think implied in here, who, remember who this is addressed to? The weary and the burdened and the overdone. So I think implied in here is I'm carrying a load that I was too much load for too long, right? And so I think implied if I'm going to take Jesus' yoke, I need to disconnect from what I'm connected to, right? I can't take his yoke upon me if I'm already yoked to a bunch of other things. And so uh, there's an implication here. It, it ties to Psalms 55, 22, which says, cast your cares upon the Lord and he will sustain you. And, and, and the picture is literally taking that load and, and shoving it off. Cast your cares upon... Now listen, they might be... He might... Uh, give you back things uh, to take care of, but He's going to refresh you in the meantime. Take that load that's wearing you out and say, God, here it is. I can't carry this anymore. And He says, finally, cast your cares upon the Lord. Remove that. Now, I'm talking about a daily practice, remember? I think this is something when we reach burnout they were like, all right, God, I'm fried. I need help. And God will meet you there. Praise God, right? He will meet you there. You know what I don't see in this text? Criticism. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, you boneheads. What are you thinking? Grow up. Get some faith. Get rid of it. I don't see condemnation. I don't see criticism. I say, I see, he said, what? I am humble and gentle. Come to me. I'm going to help you out. Aren't you glad? Half the time... Sometimes life just brings things that we didn't choose and we got to deal with it. And sometimes we choose things that just make problems for ourselves and we still have to deal with it. And regardless of how we got in the mess, he says, bring that to me. What I want to inspire you with, I hope, is just like we make loading up, if you will, feeding on the Word, time in His presence, speaking faith declarations, listening to God. I think of that in the, I prefer in the morning, but whenever I like to start my day, if your day starts at 5 a.m. or 10 a.m. or noon, or if you do your time at the nighttime, but I like to think of loading up uh, on the Word, loading up my faith, building up uh, my reserves before I head out for the day, right? Think of this as unloading. <laughs> Maybe this is something you do at night. You could certainly do it in the morning, but I think of at night I have accumulated worry and stress and boy I talked to that person now I'm thinking about their junk and 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 then I prayed for them and I'm thinking about their junk and and I went through all these things today and now I got all that junk and what happens if I do that day after day after day after day I'm just beginning to carry all this load of my own problems and the people around me's problems and 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 God said what if we just every day said here you go Lord I'm going to bed it's all yours We'll start over tomorrow. Tomorrow's a new day. I cast this care upon you. You're good. You're faithful. You can handle it. We'll, we'll start a new perspective in the morning. What if I, instead of allowing the residue uh, to, to build and build and build, had to change, you know, put a, clean up my lawnmower, put belts on it, all that, put sharp in the blades. And that, I don't know if you've never done that. Let me just tell you, on the bottom side of that lawnmower, if you don't clean it, it was just layers and layers of, and, and I left it sit all winter. So layers and layers of like cement-like grass clippings, wet, wet, and, and I had to get screwdrivers and chisels and clean this stuff out. Why? It's just one blade at a time of grass, but they just pile up on there and dry out. And it was a whole big job when you, right when, when uh, right after you mow, you could blow it off a little garden hose. And I think in our life, we just get layer upon layer upon layer. We're carrying around this big load of worry and fear and anxiety and stress and responsibility and uncertainty and problems. And what if we just got in the habit of every, just saying, God, I need, I need your help. I give this to you. I surrender this to you. I don't need to carry this. I'm a half-ton truck, which is pretty cool and awesome, but I wasn't meant to carry 4,500 pounds. 
right? You can't overload God. <laughs> Cast your cares upon Him. So let me give you real quick three things that I think imply His yoke. Take His yoke upon you. One is His teaching. What was common in Jesus' day, uh, again, they are, they are under a Jewish custom moving into with Jesus, right, the new covenant, Christianity. Uh, but under the Jewish custom, there was rabbis, teachers, and people would apprentice the disciples under the rabbis. Just like today, if you go to uh, different churches, especially different denominations, what you're going to find is hopefully we agree on the major things of faith about Jesus as the Son of God, the virgin birth, the, His death, burial, resurrection, the, the truth and inerrancy of God's Word. I hope we agree on all that, but you might find some differences, right? How we worship or what songs we sing or maybe how we think about baptism or certain aspects of faith. You might find some nuances. And in Jesus' day, they had the same thing. They, had, they were Jewish people, but they had different ways to interpret how to live uh, that life. And they called it their yoke. And when you apprenticed or discipled under a rabbi, you would take their yoke upon you. In other words, uh, you would take their belief, their doctrine, their theology, and you'd say, I want to follow Jesus, which means I want to I believe what he believes. I want to live how he lives. And maybe there was a different rabbi. You'd say, I want to follow him. I believe what he believes. I want to live how he lives. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, which meant take my teaching. Why? Because I am kind, I am gentle. He said, learn of me and I will give rest to your soul. So could I suggest that part of taking God's yoke upon us is looking to his word because there's many solutions to our problems in God's word. Uh, if you have a financial problem, there is much to say in the Bible about finances. Part of it is coming to Him, right? Finding rest. Part of it is taking His teaching upon you, and you're going to find the answer to the thing that's weighing you down. If it's, it's uh, relationship problems, I think, don't hold me to this, but I think when I finish this series, we're going to do a, a series called Relationship Repair, because relationships are one of the the central struggles of our life, and the Bible has a lot to say about reconciliation and restoring relationships. Take my yoke, my teaching upon you, you'll find rest for your soul. Second is his lordship. Uh, his yoke is his teaching. Secondly, the idea of a yoke is the two are physically tied together, right? We, we have just given up independence. I am yoked together. That's why the Bible says don't be unequally yoked, right? Because we don't want to be tied together with someone of a different worldview or belief system. And so what we do want to be yoked together with Jesus. Take my yoke upon you. That's lordship. You're in control. We're tied together. Where you go, I go. Jesus said, I don't do anything apart from the Father. I don't say anything He hasn't told me to say. That's the idea of the Christian faith is he's Lord and we are in this together. And thirdly, uh, the idea of the yoke was to connect it. It wasn't just to tie the two oxen together to meander around. It was so they could get something done. And so the third part of the yoke is his will or his assignment for you. What does God, with you partnered with him, isn't that amazing? That It does kind of imply you're an ox. But... You're connected to Jesus, and He wants you to accomplish something. Take my burden, take my job, take my task upon you, and you'll find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. You see, God has an assignment for you. Now, easy and light might not be how you describe it, but when we are in the center of God's will, when we're doing what He called us to do, when we're doing what we were created to do, when we're doing what we're gifted in, it, it, it is a burden. See, I don't know if you've ever been backpacking, but uh, there, there are, you know, the, the, the very plain, no, not the worst case is those little string backpacks. Those are of the devil, right? The little vinyl -y thingies with strings, like they just dig into your shoulder and they're worthless. But, you know, they, they got like the, the school backpacks that kids, you know, injure themselves with because they put 20 books in. But they, they're these simple little straps that were never meant to carry 80 pounds by. And, and you know, and then you put it only on one shoulder because only nerds carry them on two shoulders, which I used, I did that, so. 
anyway. <laughs> but they're not, they're, they're not comfortable. But if you've ever actually gone backpacking, like on an extended hike, they actually make really nice backpacks that, that have framework and infrastructure and padding. They have, they have separation from in your back area, so there's airflow and ventilation. There's, pad, there's a strap around your waist and a strap around your chest and, and, and pads on these. They're nice wide. And you can carry 80 pounds if you're a guy, and if you're a tough girl, right? You can 60 pounds, 80 pounds, and, it, and it's, it's comfortable. It's a load but it's not hurting you. Does that make sense? And the language of Jesus saying, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, is he's saying, I have a custom-made yoke for you that is padded and formed in the right way that you can comfortably carry the load you were designed to carry. Does that make sense? And too often we we are carrying burdens we weren't built for. So when he says, take my yoke, he's saying, take my teaching, unite with me, with Jesus as Lord, and and if you would carry the load that I designed you for, what you're going to find is it fits you well. And you'll find rest for your soul. You'll find rest for your soul. See, that's the state. God, God doesn't want us to not do anything. He wants us to be productive, but He wants us to do what He's created us to do. He doesn't want us worn out and tired and running on empty. He, I think there's something in the Scripture about life and life more abundantly. I want our uh, worship team to come up. Uh, I, hesit- I hesitate to tell you this, but I think you're mature enough to handle it. Are you, are you mature today? One of the most... Um, because I think this will help us. One of the most um, chronic health inhibiting struggles of the American population has to do with consuming and not eliminating. We have a name for that called constipation. Sorry, I had to go there. And besides some discomfort, what's happening, I'm just telling you physically, but we're going to learn something here. What's happening is what uh, the consumption wasn't the problem necessarily, but now that this, uh, the remain is toxic. And it's not meant to stay in my body. And if I'm carrying that around, it leads to all kinds of health struggles. Almost, it's not the cause, but it's a cause of many, 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 many health struggles. It's consuming but not eliminating. And obviously, without going too far with this regular, elimination is healthy. Now, apply this to our soul. We're body, soul, and spirit. We're made in the image of God. We, 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 we take into our life. We, we deal with people. We deal with struggle. We deal with stress. We don't live in a bubble. We deal with pain. There's, there's sickness. There's struggle. There's debt. There's bills. There's people. Come on. There's, there's people. There's human, other human beings in our life that stress us out, right? We take in all this stuff, and God has created, listen, a healthy way to to eliminate. We need to come to God and cast those burdens upon the Lord and say, I don't want to carry this. It it has now, what gave me nutrient originally has, by me continuing to carry it, has become toxic. And God gave us a simple way. Come to me when you're weary. Take my yoke upon you. Which, in other words, we should be examining what am I yoked to? What am I carrying? I should be regularly, daily, unloading the burdens of my life onto the Lord. And just like a pause and a rest, most of the time we're going to pick that back up again. 
but we're going to do it refreshed, renewed, with a better mindset, with a, maybe with a solution instead of carrying this for months and weeks after getting pause and rest and a good night's sleep and some time with the Lord, we've got solutions. Come to me when you're weary, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So I'm going to do two things. Real quick, I want to pray. If you are here, you're online, and you're not a follower of Jesus, and that sounds a little harsh. Maybe you're in the room, maybe you're watching online, you're already showing some fabulous uh, effort and faithfulness. Uh, but what I mean by that is you've not made the choice to acknowledge Jesus as Savior, to repent of your sins, to surrender. Remember we talked about his yoke of lordship? See, we kind of like to live like, like the wild ox out in the pasture. And the best way to live is connected to Jesus. That's what it means to be a Christian as I have made him Lord and Savior and King of my life. And trust me, that's not boring. It is absolutely thrilling and freeing, but it's a choice we have to make to declare Jesus as Lord. If you need to do that today, I want to invite you to pray with me. Um, and uh, let's just, in the room, let's pray out loud and make this surrender today. Pray with me. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life as a sacrifice for my sins. Today, I choose to invite you into my life to acknowledge you as Lord and Savior and King. I repent for sin in my life and I turn to you and I follow you with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, that's awesome. If you're online today, would you do me a hugest favor? Would you tell somebody uh, if you made that decision? Um, you can email me, office at alaog.org. You can tell somebody that's with you today. Maybe you know somebody who's a believer, but don't, don't keep that a secret. Uh, that's the most amazing choice you could ever make and one that we want to celebrate with you. Amen. Listen, this is how I want to end today. Uh, is Check your watch. I got time, so now you can relax. If you remember last week, Jesus, if you don't remember last week, catch it on YouTube. But we looked at the book of Matthew 1, and it said Jesus got up early in the morning while it was still dark, went out to a solitary place and prayed. And he had a, a time, a premeditated, he made the decision at bedtime, right, that I'm going to get up early and go meet with the Father. He had a time, he had a place that was solitary, and he had a, he had a plan. He went out to pray. All of these daily practices require that framework. Uh, and so, again, I think this is a great thing to do at the end of your day, but you can do it any time of the day. But I want to take a few minutes right now as we sing this song, and uh, I just believe the Lord's going to lift some burdens today. And uh, maybe you just need to draw near to the Lord. Come to me. Just be in His presence. Let Him refresh you. And maybe it is some examination of, of unloading that burden that I'm carrying, giving it to the literally. Lord, that husband of mine, praise God for him. I give him to you. Help me out. Right? Those kids, they're a wonderful blessing. They're stressing me out. I give them to you. That, that, uh, these bills, I'm not sure what to do, uh, but I give this burden to you. You provide all, right? all that I need according to your glorious riches. You're not free from responsibility, but you're getting a pause. You're just giving the worry of that to the Lord, and he's going to give you a mindset, a perspective, a, a energy, and a in a direction to be able to handle it. So I want to invite you to stand. If you're home, just join with us. Let's just spend a couple minutes as we worship, unburdening our soul and uh, taking the time to uh, re find rest in Him. Do you? 
heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope come on sing who could imagine that you're there for us, that you're faithful, that you love us, that you're with us. We thank you for rest for our soul. We decree that 
Lord, that we don't uh, have to fall prey to the masses that are worn out with fatigue and, and mental exhaustion. We just declare the, the, the rest of the Spirit, the rest of your presence to our lives. Help us, Lord, come to you like you've offered to us. Come to you and find that rest for our soul. Thank you for health. Thank you for victory. And uh, thank you that you carry those burdens for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have an amazing week. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, have an amazing, wonderful afternoon. And I can't wait to see you back here next Sunday. God bless.